during these challenging times of COVID-19, many young people are finding it hard to cope with isolation, a loss of routine, anxiety about the future, a disruption to their education, creating a disruption to their mental instability. And parents, as well as many groups from civil society, are calling on the government to take steps to protect mental health as the country eases some lockdown restrictions and looks to get people back to school and work. They are urging the government to provide immediate mental health support for all young people and families who need it. But to help tackle the pandemic's long-term consequences, they are also asking for schools to be supported to be able to offer mental health support and restriction changes. Which is very apt, I must have to say. So joining us from the UK is Raima Mevo, a Ghanaian-born UK, born in the UK, beg your pardon, we'll be discussing how to manage your mental health and well-being during social distancing, or self-isolating during the coronavirus outbreak and the impact on the Afro-Caribbean community. It's a pleasure having you from the UK uh, this morning. A uh, very apt conversation because uh, mental health is a very cardinal part of even surviving COVID itself. And the impact is more on the Afro-Caribbean community owing to the fact that there's been some form of societal stratification and setback just being a black person in the UK. So if it's one WAMI for a white British citizen, it is a double WAMI for an African. What's your take on this? African Caribbean people and people of African are always at a higher risk um, of developing health um, Essentially, so firstly, in firstly for the coronavirus, we're actually seeing higher numbers of people that are actually being affected by the virus. Um, so that in itself um, is you know, creating anxiety in the I think the important now is for, you know, organisations, um, like organisations that have those connections with Africa, 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 Africa around the world, is to joining forces, ensuring that Africa understand how to manage their mental health um, and how to use the resources available to them to be able to help with time. So really it's about, you know, collaboration um, and company and putting our resources because you know, at the end of the day, you know, it, it's not going to be, unfortunately, it's not going to be um, other people that are, are going to save us, are going to be ourselves. So we really come together um, and actually start taking this um, economic of serious um, and talk about it, um, coming together and strategizing on how we look after our mental health. Indeed, but let me ask you, how does this affect population groups differently, if it does, and uh, specifically in regards to children and the elderly? Are we seeing the same trends, or is it different affecting them? Yeah, well, it's, it's, um, it's affecting different, different ways, um, because, you know, the different, different sectors of children are going to have different... So, you know, for, for example, for young children... I mean, you know, young children have a lot of energy. They're, they're used to being outside, seeing their friends. So this is a huge shock to their system. Um, their kind of mindset because they've, they've never had to experience it before and they're very young. So where their mind um, and their body not developed in the first place, uh, it's going to affect them. They're not going to have only the right, like, to help to be able to um, For older people, um, it's case of more isolation and loneliness, also people are more prone to suffer from it in the first place. So this, the COVID-19, is actually worse than All right, I want to come in here and talk to you about what your organization is currently doing. I mean, here in Nigeria, we have an organization called Mentally Aware Nigeria Initiative, who has come out to say, you know what, we're going to have our specialists offer free therapy even during this coronavirus pandemic. So is that something you are looking to do in the UK? Yeah, so actually, we um, actually already have that. Um, so on, on our website, um, we have a directory of of specialists that serve the Africa, in Africa in the UK. Um, and they are also providing a service during the time. So uh, for if, if any 
especially for you know issues such as anxiety, depression, your if you lost um, a loved one, if you're going through bereavement, um, our counselors are also offering um, in Africa and in the Right. Uh, I just wanted to talk about you know quick wins and steps at, at which to. Uh, help your mental outlook during this season because it's quite a very dire season. Take the UK for instance. Uh, the UK's borrowing now has not increased to 100% of GDP in the UK. Uh, Rishi Sunak was saying the other day that there may have to be increased taxations. A lot of people are losing jobs in the UK. The systems are stressed. So there's a lot of headwinds coming out of average British citizens. An average British family will never be the same again. So what are the quick steps, the quick wins, you know, as regards balancing out your mental outlook during the season? I think one of the most important things to do is learn how to frame your And um, what, what we think how and our outlook on life um, is really important for how we deal with stress. So for example, at the if you lost your job um, and you don't have any immediate income, instead of thinking to yourself, okay, if you frame the thought, say, okay, well, now I have extra, I have some more time to actually maybe upskill myself, focus on hobbies that I've kind of left by um, whilst I've been working. Um, but if you can't, it's still friends, you're missing friends, you're missing family. So re reframe the, that thought to say, well, actually, right, thank, thank God we have technology. There's other ways to live with um, that I love, and I can do it digitally. And also, as well, I have I now have some time to actually focus on myself um, and practice some self care techniques. For example, um, journaling. Um, journaling is very helpful. Um, you know, you've never done it before. It's writing, writing down the things that happen today, or you know, things that work. And what what it does help you find your support. Um, and not just kind of part of it, but also that your your mind is not feeling feeling so heavy. Um, so, yeah, I recommend reframing the way they are. And you know, when you when you think of something negative, reframe it to think of something positive so that you counteract that negative thought that you're having. Um, and, you yeah, as you're doing the, the journey, all that will kind of help you lead the function um, and help you organize it. A wow. um, another thing to do is to make sure you get some exercise in, um, even if it's just um, you know, not everybody exercises. I'm not a big fan of going to the gym, um, but I'm feeling my best. But actually, doing, moving your body and having something, even if it's the skin. All right, Rayma, we'll have to go for a quick break and see uh, how we can best fix your connection because uh, the conversation is not that smooth at the moment. But we'll be right back to talk some more. Stay with us. And thanks for joining us again. You're still watching the morning show here on Arise News. And uh, we still have Rayma Mevel, a Ghanaian, uh, born in the UK, and she's been discussing how to manage mental health and well being uh, while social distancing and self isolation are in place during this period of coronavirus uh, pandemic. Uh, thank you so much for staying with us. You had spoken about how best to ease. Thanks for having me. Great. You spoke about how best to ease stress at a time like this. But let me ask you, as you observe the development so far, um, what is your biggest concern when it comes to the mental health of Africans and uh, others in general at a time like this? What are your biggest fears? You know, my biggest fear is the fact that in Africa as a, you know, as a continent, we lack the basic education about our mental health. And we lack the infrastructure to deal with the mental health crisis. Um, I've spoken before about how Africa is actually going, it will be going into um, a mental health crisis um, in the near future, just because we lack the basic services for people that are dealing with any of these issues. Um, what COVID-19 has done has fast-tracked a mental health crisis, you know, that we're going to have in the continent, um, because we don't have the, you know, that adequate services and the infrastructure to support people's mental health issues. Um, there's, you know, a massive stigma um, around uh, mental health um, and people don't, you know, don't un understand mental health. Um, they don't know how to deal with their mental health. So I think it's really important for African nations 
to, you know, embark upon a public information campaign to actually get people to have the basic understanding about mental health. Um, another, another issue is the fact that, you know, we have, you know, a thriving sector of traditional um, healers um, and traditional specialists that um, supposedly help people with their mental health. But unfortunately, um, a lot of the time, people are also taken advantage of. Um, where we lack um, regulated services um, is where, you know, people are going to start, see we're going to start seeing more people being taken advantage of and more people um, suffering, um, suffering mental health issues and not having the adequate um, services that they need. Hmm. All right. Uh, one thing that has also increased that during this season has been violence against women, and this has also affected their mental health. All sorts of abuses have increased during the COVID-19 season. I mean, uh, what would you be telling somebody that their mental health has been greatly affected because of this violence? against them? What would you be telling them to do? I would tell them to ensure that they're able to speak to, if they're able to get in contact with any family um, or friends or, you know, people around them that can, that can support them um, and kind of move them out of the situation. The, the thing about suffering um, domestic violence is that, you know, people often feel ashamed about what is happening and they don't want to speak out. You know, but I really want to appeal to anybody that is suffering through that to say something, um, because you know, no, no matter what happens, you're going to you you will get the support from people around you that care about you. Um, and the most important thing is that you're you're somewhere safe. Um, so you know, if you're if you're feeling embarrassed, if you're feeling like you can't um, speak about it, um, you know, you can, <laughs> and you should be speaking about it, and you should be telling people so that they can support you the best way they can. Um, and, you know, pe people won't know how to support you unless they know what's happening. Definitely. I mean, we have spoken about people that have uh, had to stay home because of the virus. Uh, like Rufa Rifle mentioned, women who have suffered violence because they've had to stay at home with their abusers. But I want to talk about the health workers as well as the patients that were hospitalized. We did have a case of an Italian nurse back in March who took her life because she found out that she was positive and was scared that she had passed on the virus to multiple people, as well as those that had have to spend time in these uh, treatment centers. They seem to have higher uh, uh, sites of you know, fear, isolation, and also stigmatization. So is there a focus on this group of people, the health workers and those that have survived COVID-19? Yeah, um, you know, I, I think, again, it's about this, the, the education around the virus um, and letting people understand what the statistics are actually saying and who, who, is, who, who it's affecting. And actually the fact that, yes, um, this is a virus that, you know, does, um, does result in death, but in a, high, in a higher percentage, a much higher percentage, people do survive and, you know, people do get out of it. So again, you know, it's about the education, educating people so there's not that stigma around the virus that, you know, if you have the virus, that's it. There's nothing can, that can be done for you. No, that's not the case. Um, you know, if, if, you have, if you have the virus, it's, you know, through kind of no, no fault of your own. Um, and if you feel like, you know, you spread, you spread the virus, what, what, you know, what you should be doing is say, OK, now that you know um, that you have the virus, what can you do to protect yourself and protect people around you? Um, but to, you know, just to bring it home down again, we really need to educate people and, and actually educate people on the positive aspects. And when I say positive, I'm talking about the statistics around deaths and around people that actually recover from the virus. Um, you know, there's a lot of negative news right now um, about the virus. And although there is, um, this is a negative situation, there's also a lot of, you know, good things and great things that are happening in the world right now. Um, you know, see people are coming together, you know, people are helping each other. And, you know, we should be focusing on, on this aspect as well to let people know that, you know, having the virus or, you know, this virus happening at the moment, you know, is not, it's not going to be the end of the world and we will recover from this. Um, and there is, you know, light at the end of this tunnel. Uh, Rayma, as we wrap up, uh, for better understanding for our viewers who may not know, uh, anxiety, fear, stress, are there abnormal reactions in a time like this to the situation we are having with COVID-19? And what is your general message to everyone? Yeah, listen, that nothing has happened in our lifetime like this. 
there is no abnormal reaction to what is happening right now. Every reaction is, is quote unquote normal because this is something that we've never had to deal with. It's something that our minds have never had to deal with, our bodies never had to deal with. Um, so no one, you know, no one should feel guilty. No one should feel, you know, bad about themselves if they're, re they're reacting in a different way and they don't understand, you know, they don't understand why they're feeling that way. You know, what, what you, what you should be doing is giving giving yourself that time engaging in some self-care and saying to yourself you know it's okay you know how I'm feeling and what I'm going through at the moment you know it's a however you're feeling if you're having fear if you're having anxiety um you know this this is normal this is a normal reaction to what is happening because we've never experienced it before um you know and I, I would also urge people to to reach out to mental health specialists and to reach out to their friends and their family as well. So, you know, this is a time where connection is very important, ensuring that you're still digitally connected. Even if, even if you can't see people, you know, continue to stay connected digitally. Um, uh, on Mindfully African, we have mental health specialists um, that are offering free support. You also mentioned Mentally Aware NG as well, which is, you know, an amazing resource. Take advantage of these, these resources right now because, you know, that we all have, mental health specialists and therapists are offering free support so you know people to take um and you know tap into these resources and learn about you know mental health and how to manage your well-being during this time all right the role I, I wanted to quickly talk about the role of association you know having a network that can hold you when you feel mentally down i mean how can we build those important clusters well, first of all, it's, you know, it's, 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 it's good to have these associations, but also a lot of the time people don't even feel comfortable tapping into these associations because, well, you know, when you, sometimes when you suffer from mental health issues, you, you know, you're, you're embarrassed, you're afraid, you don't want to talk to people. So we really need to change and educate people on the mindset that we need to have, that it's okay to talk about these issues and actually you know, most people throughout their lifetime go through something that affects their mental health. It's nothing to be embarrassed about. It's nothing to be ashamed about. You know, we all go through times, you know, when we're not happy. So shifting people's mindset to say that it's it's okay to talk about these issues and, you know, people are there for you is kind of the first step in the association. And then the second step is actually, you know, people engaging in talking about these issues because the more we talk about it, the more someone that's suffering from it will then feel comfortable to start talking about it, right? So, you know, within ourselves, we all have a responsibility, actually, to be vulnerable um, and to be open about things that we're suffering from um, and to not, you know, to, to not kind of demonise ourselves or, you know, act like we're not having these issues. So, we, you know, we all have an individual responsibility to show one another that, you know, it's OK to have these issues and, and you know, we can support each other. And then, Rayma Amavo, thank you so much for coming on The Morning Show today. Much appreciated.